if you said to me, uh, would you want this to happen again so you could go through it again? I'd say, hell no, are you crazy? Uh, but nonetheless, you do, you do recognize that out of, out of really bad stuff comes a lot of good stuff. It was just funny to name my tour. Um, Joe Poli is really, really mean, and he messed with the wrong boy. I think that Gavin is here today because he took healing to another level. You know, he um, took every bad situation that he was put in and he made it better. And it showed us as his parents how to live each day, how to be thankful for the little things. People think sick people should look sick, but that's just not the way I roll. That's just not the way I walk out the door. Really, I make sure that I walk out looking a whole lot better than I really do feel. A lot of people look at me as though it's kind of an oxymoron, almost like sick people shouldn't look good, especially when you're on oxygen. I don't even have any shame in my game that I have one, you know, three, four inch heels with my cannula in to breathe. Having a positive attitude, I am convinced, is what helps you live longer and just to go out and celebrate and buy some new shoes. Look cute. If you didn't know my story, you wouldn't have ever guessed that I'd ever gone through something like that. I don't come off as the type of person that would have ever attempted suicide. I bought the truck a couple months before the attempt and it was my baby. Every time that I'd start to get down, I just look at the truck and remember that's waiting for me. That's gonna be how I get through this. They, they say that time heals all wounds. I don't necessarily think that's true. I think time just makes them easier to cope with. And all of a sudden, I heard that terrible screech that we all fear, that we never wanna hear. Everyone walked away except for Teddy who was life flighted to Savannah. Well, Teddy was in a coma for a month and had multiple surgeries to his uh, repair his crushed skull. At every point of his recovery, uh, we had um, people praying for very specific things that he would wake up, that the pressure um, in his brain would subside, that he would speak again, that he would see again, that he would walk again. And, uh, you know, prayer it really is the only thing. After they've exhausted all the medical treatments, uh, that's all that's left. Halo is my angel. Halo is my sweetheart. Halo is there for me. Halo's feet never touch the ground. <laughs> uh, she's not just a dog. She is my angel dog. From the time that I actually woke up from my coma, I have felt as blessed as a person could. If she weren't here for me and being as calm and easygoing as she is and who I could just look at and grab up and hold. I'm not really sure how far I would be on my recovery. It's so silly, it's so dumb, but the accident in our mind, it was such a gift for us. It changed the way we view everything. We are incredibly appreciative of the little things. And it sounds very cliched, appreciate the little things, but boy, do we ever. We appreciate seeing him walk the dog. Not because he's walking the dog, but because he's walking. We are so grateful when he's out there playing baseball and he loses. Because the fact that he was able to play the baseball game is a miracle. It's incredible in and of itself. When you have tragedy happen, whether it's cancer, you know, some sort of illness or an accident, you know, you can choose how you look at it. We just took stock. We stopped and said, what are we doing? Where are we going? Who do we want to be? It is sad that it takes a catastrophic event sometimes to put it into real perspective. 
and having that reality smack you in the face, in my mind, that that's motivation enough. Healing is a is a process. The process starts from within yourself, and you've got to want to heal. You've got to want to be better, and you've got to have a drive to be better. If you put your mind to do something, you can do anything. Um, there's proof of that all over the world. Hmm. Well, the kind of the kind of brain cancer I have has very um, poor average survival rates and not a lot of encouraging options for treatment. So I've done a lot of medical treatment, but I've I've learned that for me to stay moving forward and stay uh, moving towards wellness, I've learned I have to be doing other things in addition to the medical treatment or uh, I can feel myself withering. So I know that it helps calm my mind and helps me breathe easier. And sometimes if I have a headache, it helps helps that go away if I go sit next to the river. It's a mystery. I don't know. I don't know all that it does, but I trust that it, it does something. My understanding of the main the main work of healing is is receiving love and opening up to that. And that medical treatments complement that and can support that and make space for that. But the essence is really opening up to love in the world through nature and community and creativity. Who gives a damn about whether or not you feel sorry for yourself? No one cares. I don't care. Who's going to care? Just keep moving. You want what Mike's got? You wouldn't pray to get what he's got. That's right. Pain never comes naturally. So nobody prays for pain, but everybody prays to grow. Well, what happens when you're going through stuff that's painful is you're growing. My dad would always say that your life and its surroundings are a direct reflection of your own attitude. And I knew that once I was diagnosed, I couldn't change that diagnosis, but I could change my attitude. And there were so many nights that I would be feeling different emotions and I would just go to the church where I worked late at night by myself. Sometimes it was 11, 12 o'clock in the morning. And I would just go and sit at the piano and, and play for as long as I could until I felt like the emotions that I had inside of me were able to be released. And I would go down to my garage with a piece of paper that said cancer, cancer. And I'd tape it to my backdrop and I'd go on camera and I'd blow it apart with my machine gun. Even if you do fight your guts out, sometimes you're not gonna win. But continuing to fight, be bullheaded, be stubborn. Because there are gonna be seasons of your life that suck. There are gonna be things that happen, people that die, people that are taken from you. And it doesn't make sense. And sometimes it, you ask the question, you for sure ask the question, why? Why does this happen to this person? But I just know that there is, there's hope. There's hope, there's a different hope. And why not, why not trust in something? Why, why not believe in something that can give you that peace and that joy and that comfort?